à Madame Martha Ama Akia Poubé. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, thank you for this opportunity to brief the Security Council on the UN Interim Security Force for ABA, including the mission's support to the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism. I will also update you on the latest developments since the publication of the report of the Secretary General. Mr. President, Today's Security Council session comes at a time of renewed engagement in the political process to address the final status of ABA and South Sudan-South Sudan border issues. While progress has yet to materialize in the form of improvements in the lives and rights of the people of ABA, there have been significant steps towards dialogue in the context of continued improvement in the relationship between the Sudan and South Sudan. We are also encouraged by the agreement earlier this week between Sudanese and South Sudanese officials to enhance joint cooperation on issues related to ABA and the final status and the willingness indicated to resume meetings of the ABA Joint Oversight Committee, EJOC, which has not met since 2017. The African Union Peace and Security Council is seized of the ABA issue, having recently requested the African Union Commission to nominate a facilitator for the EJOC, and we welcome the renewed efforts by the African Union High Level Implementation Panel, chaired by former President Thabo Mbeki, to engage the local communities and the sustained engagement by the Special Envoy of the Secretary General for the Horn of Africa, Hannah Tete. It is a welcome sign that the parties and regional actors are now giving greater diplomatic attention to the issue. I encourage all stakeholders including the international community, to sustain support to the ongoing efforts. UNISPA stands ready to play its role in support of our shared objectives for ABA. Mr. President, while the security situation in the ABA administrative area remained mostly calm, there has been some shift in the conflict dynamics seen in previous years. Despite the continued trust deficit between the Miseria and the Ngokdenka communities, intercommunal violence between the two declined somewhat during 2022. UNESPA has worked continuously to promote intercommunal dialogue, and after a failed attempt earlier in the year, the mission was successful in facilitating the Joint Traditional Leaders Peace Conference in Entebbe, Uganda in May, bringing together leaders of both communities and leading to a joint communique in which leaders recommitted to peace, while also noting remaining points of disagreement. The mission continues to engage both communities as well as leaders in Khartoum and Juba with the aim of holding seasonal peace conferences to discuss modalities during the transhuman season. Critical to the success of such dialogues, as well as grassroots conflict resolution mechanisms, will be the full, equal, and meaningful participation of women, which to date has been lacking. UNESFA will work with both communities to ensure the integration of the Women, Peace, and Security agenda into the substantive results of conferences and other engagements as a vital tool for advancing peace. The year 2022 has seen a new conflict emerging between the Ngok Denka and Twitch Denka communities in southern Abiy. Since the outbreak of clashes in February, much of the intercommunal violence witnessed in Abia has been related to this conflict, with loss of life on both sides and the displacement of thousands of civilians, including many who sought sanctuary next to UNISFA bases. 
Despite mobility challenges due to flooding during the rainy season, UNESPA has responded to these clashes by intensifying patrols to deter further violence, offering protection to those displaced, and providing medical services to the wounded. The mission continues to engage with local authorities and community leaders to restore calm and provide a secure environment for displaced families to return home. After a lull in the violence during the rainy season, clashes resumed in late September and October. This worrying development potentially foreshadows further violence during the upcoming dry season as conditions improve for mobility. In this regard, UNISFA, in coordination with the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, has maintained close contact with the government of South Sudan to support mediation efforts, and in particular, plans for a government-facilitated peace conference to be held in South Sudan. We are particularly concerned that amid the tensions between the Ngok Denka and Twek Denka communities, there have been attacks and threats against UNISFA peacekeepers, staff, and contractors. A total of seven attacks on peacekeepers were recorded during the reporting period, including attacks against patrols responding to intercommunal violence at Amiet Market, Anthony and Malwal Alieu, the targeting of UNISFA observation posts, and attacks on UNISFA bases in Athene, Tajale, and Marial Ashak. The use of high caliber weapons, such as rocket propelled grenades against UNISFA troops in these attacks, has been of concern to the mission. While these incidents did not result in serious injuries to peacekeepers, we condemn these attacks in the strongest terms and remind all parties that such violence may constitute crimes under international law. Most recently, starting on 16th October, the safety and security of UNESCO personnel once again came under threat during protests by local community members demanding the removal of Twitch Dinka employees and some international staff members from the UNISFA headquarters camp in Abbey. The missions prompt engagement with local community leaders to seek a peaceful solution, and their support in that regard help to calm the situation. We would like to reiterate that the safety and security of our peacekeepers, staff, and contractors remains a top priority, and we urge the government of South Sudan to continue its engagement with the local community to ensure that such threats do not reoccur. The humanitarian community continued to assist 250,000 vulnerable people in central and southern Abbey, including people displaced by intercommunal clashes. Significant flooding took place in late August in a large part of the Abbey area, affecting some 91,000 people. UNISFA supported the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and other partners in delivering humanitarian assistance by air to some of those who remained cut off by ropes. I am pleased to report that the reconfiguration of the mission into a multinational peacekeeping force continued during the reporting period and it is near completion with 2,567 military personnel out of the authorized 3,250 personnel in place. The reconfiguration process is expected to be finalized in the coming months with the arrival of the remaining troops and equipment during the upcoming dry season. As the new force establishes itself on the ground, the mission is collaborating with the United Nations headquarters to develop a new mission concept, the mission plan, and the military and police concepts of operations to drive the strategy of UNISFA in undertaking mandate implementation. The new force is also undertaking civil military coordination activities to help meet some of the basic needs of the local population 
and build support for UNISPA's mandate. A remaining challenge for the mission is the relatively low numbers of women among military personnel at only 7%, and I urge all stakeholders to work with UNISPA to prioritize deployment of women troops. With the Ngoc Twit conflict creating new protection needs in the South, the new force needs to be better equipped to cover a wider area. Force mobility in a context of reduced helicopter capacity and a terrain flooded half of the year is a further challenge. At the same time, the mission continues to face other capacity challenges in respect of its support to the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism, where no progress has been made in reoperationalization its Sector 1, including the sector headquarters in Gokmasha, South Sudan, and its team sites 11 and 12, after its forced withdrawal in 2021. It is critical that the government of South Sudan continues its efforts to enable the re-establishment of these locations as soon as possible, as underscored by the Security Council in its press statement of 15th October 2021. Also during the reporting period, there has been no progress on the deployment of the three formed police units and individual police officers as mandated by the Security Council due to continued non-issuance of visas. I appeal to Security Council members for their support in facilitating the deployment of these valuable assets. In the meantime, UN Police continues to mentor and monitor the Community Protection Committees and the Joint Protection Committees in the absence of the ABA police service. Two encouraging developments occurred in June 2022, when UNISFA inaugurated the first ever gender desk to report cases of gender-based violence 24-7, and when CPCs were established in some areas in Northern ABA for the first time since 2015. Mr. President, this council has clearly indicated that our efforts need to focus on improving the rights and livelihoods of people in Abia. To that end, the mission continues to work closely with the UN country teams in Sudan and South Sudan on the Abia joint program. Following a productive visit by the resident and humanitarian coordinators of the Sudan and South Sudan, the program document is nearly completed and implementation of the activities planned are expected to commence during the next reporting period. The joint program will help create an enabling environment for peace by focusing on services in the areas of water management, health, livelihoods, and conflict resolution skills. It also focuses on creating opportunities for youth and women as central actors in peace building. I am grateful for your continued political support to this important <coughs> initiative. USG Lacroix's visit to Abie, accompanied by Special Envoy Tete, will provide an opportunity to address some of the political and logistical challenges mentioned today. Mr. President, I'd like to end my remarks by thanking Major General Benjamin Sawyer and the women and men of UNISFA for their tireless work in service of peace in Abi. I would also like to thank Security Council members for their continued support to UNISFA and seek the Council's support for the Secretary General's recommendation to extend the mandate of UNISFA for a period of one year. Thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie Madame Kobe de son exposé. Je donne maintenant la parole à Madame Anna Tete.